everyone. Uh, I'm here today to do a video about translated books um, and world books in general. Um, that is partly because of what's happening in Ukraine and um, yeah I think that highlights the importance of um, reading from other countries so that we better understand what the situation um, has come from, like where, how did it develop. Um, and with that said, like all my sympathies to the Ukrainian people, but at the same time, um, I mean, I'm glad that um, Europe is responding to this crisis and they are welcoming Ukrainians and doing all of that. But at the same time, since the beginning, I have been feeling like, you know, not that long ago, the same exact same thing or very similar thing happened in Syria and we got a lot of Syrian people coming and they were treated very differently. Um, so it aches me a little bit that um, now because they're Ukrainians and they're Europeans and they're white, they're being treated like this, which don't get me wrong, it's, it's great that they are being welcome and yeah, I'm, I'm all my sympathies with the Ukrainian people, but at the same time, yeah, why cannot we extend that to other people as well that are not European? Um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> rant about that over. Um, yeah, I, I thought um, I will talk a little bit about uh, my experience and my relationship with translated books. Um, and world books as well, uh, because um, Lorena and I have had this conversation many times that when often on booktube when people say translated books, uh, they mean world books, um, because most people can only read in English. That's equivalent for them, um, but I think it's very different. Uh, I can read to different degrees of success in foreign languages, um, and that covers quite a range of countries because um, I can read English, Spanish, French and Dutch so I can read from most of South America and North America um, a lot of African countries if they are not uh, writing in their native languages um, India, Australia, Europe, um, Western Europe let's say um, quite a bit of that as well um, but so when I, I I love the fact that there are translated books so that I can also read from Asian countries and Eastern European countries, which is probably the place where, where I need translations the most. Um, but yeah, let, I, I think it's important to make that differentiation between translated books and um, yeah, and world books. Um, also because there are other books written in English that are also from countries like um, Nigeria or Kenya. Some people choose to write in their native languages and some people choose to write in English or French. So um, yeah, that also has to be a knowledge. And the other reason that I was thinking about this as well is because I'm currently judging the booktube prize in translated fiction, which is a new category. Um, and the, f the process of judging books is different from just reading them, right? Um, so for me, it has come with a series of realizations about which books um, are translated and why. Sometimes people treat it almost as a different genre, which obviously it's not, it's just the same stuff but written in a different language. Um, but yeah, it is treated quite a little bit different, I think, because there are some... Um, it's not like there, there are similar characteristics between translated books but there are similar characteristics between English books normally or the, the ones that are widely available uh, and that other translated books don't have. Um, it's, it, it's more than just the fact that it's from different countries but also books come from different literary traditions and they have different kind of styles, they have different topics. Uh, I find often that um, translated books are more open to new ideas and more, um, how to say that, like more, um, less polite, let's say, um, about the topics that they cover. Um, 
I find that especially nowadays there are a lot of English books that are written um, like to explain a topic to you uh, so let's say racism or transgender or and it's the, the story suffers from those things and they are trying to also present those topics in a way that is not going to offend anyone too much uh, because they have um, let's say an agenda writing those books and trying to make people um, engage with those topics which is great people should engage with those topics but I feel like it's more often the case in translated books that authors don't don't feel that they need to sugarcoat everything and they don't um, they are not afraid of offending the reader sometimes because that's the way that they are going to react um, to that topic and if they feel offended they might start thinking why they are offended by something like that um, so they are more um, more open to um, to t touch topics that might be taboo in, in English speaking um, books um, and of course there is also the fact that they are in different countries and different traditions so they will treat things different let's say like Japanese writing often has this naive magical feel to it even if it's not magical realism there is a certain um, touch that many Japanese writers have or again like the magical realism in South America and also I find in South America many many books are really brutal uh, and they don't um, shy away from the gore stuff um, so there are things like that that you can find in different traditions and I think it's it's interesting to to read different places because you find all of these different techniques and ways to tell stories that you might not have if you only read books that are, have been written in English. Another thing that I found interesting in the in the um, book to prize judging is the fact that I had not th thought about this before, but it's not that the books are from different countries alone, but they are sometimes also from different times because. Um, books can be translated many many years after they have been written in their original language so you get books that um, are from other times um, that are new let's say like i think last year we had the memory Pol last year the year before the memory police which was written in the 80s actually and was recently translated um, in my book to prize uh, judging um, there is a book that was written in 1938 that has just been translated recently um, so you get a range of times as well not just countries and i think that's a very interesting thing to think about i don't have any particular insights on that but it's something that i've noticed and i don't know if you have noticed too and you want to talk about it with me but yeah it's it, it's only it's it's the the countries it's the language the traditions the um the time frames um that make translated fiction so special to me and so important to me because um if i i feel like if we only read from um books that have been written in english we often end up with like a pattern of book and it's it at, at some point it feels it's always the same stuff over and over again um, and if you are feeling like that with your reading I will highly suggest to try some translated books um, or some books in other languages if you are able to read in other languages um, and um, I have to say also if you read in other languages uh, or you are afraid even if you speak some other language it's gonna be a struggle the first few books but then you get the hang of it um, I still remember Wooden and Heights was one of the first books I read in English um, apart from the Harry Potter books and um, it was a struggle I didn't understand half of it um, and Wooden and Heights is uh, confusing in itself um, but yeah with that added challenge it was even more difficult um, but I powered through it and I powered through the Harry Potter books because um, if you didn't know, the Harry Potter books came out in English about a few, two, three months before they came out in 
in Spanish, which is the, how I was reading them. Um, so I couldn't wait those months knowing that the story was out. So I, I and a lot of other people started reading books in English because of Harry Potter, because we wanted to read the next book without having to wait for the translation. Um, but yeah, the first few books are a struggle um, and you just have to keep going and at some point things will make more sense to you. I still struggle when I read in Dutch a lot, um, but I keep doing it because that means that my Dutch is getting better and I am open to a whole new range of books that I would not be able to read otherwise um, because many Dutch books are not translated. Um, and yeah, it's it's also a, a conversation of which books get translated and which good books get marketed. Um, and we miss a whole range of books that are never translated if we never try to read in other languages. Um, I wish I could read in more languages, of course. Um, as I said, I, Asia is something that I cannot barely read anything from apart from India, Singapore, um, everything else is written in all sorts of languages and Eastern Europe is something that I have just recently gotten into. Um, I would not be able to read any Ukrainian books if I was not reading the translated uh, versions and I have been also reading from former Yugoslavia and those countries obviously don't use English as their language either so I do value translated books a lot. I just um, but yeah, there is also something to be said about um, trying to read in other languages if you can. It's a really, really a rewarding experience, I would say. And uh, my suggestion, if you are trying to read in um, other languages and you don't feel very confident about it, try to read um, children's books, like The Little Prince is a good one. Um, Harry Potter is more difficult because all the magical words are usually words that you don't know. Um, also crime books are good because they are normally not a lot about the language. Um, and non-fiction books are also good because normally um, more scientific words are similar in, sim in other languages. Um, so those those things are, are good ways to get into write reading in other languages and then you can build that from from there um, but yeah this this was a very rumbly uh, video but I hope you enjoyed it um, and those are my some things I have been thinking about and things that I wanted to say somehow um, so I decided to make a video even if it doesn't make sense to anybody else I hope you enjoy um, until next video bye